welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at how to use your data book. This video is for the updated data book from 2021. Older videos may refer to different values and different pages, so just be aware that some of the videos will not refer to the same data book that you are now using. The first page that you'll come across in your data book is page 3, which is the contents page. Sometimes you will be directed to use your data book. So depending on what the question is asking, you should be able to use the contents page to find which page you're looking for, for a selected question. On this page, you will also find some relationships that will be useful to you in National 5 Chemistry. You're also given the specific heat capacity of water, which you will use with one of the relationships. On page four, you have a full periodic table. In this periodic table, each of the boxes shows you the atomic number at the top, the name of the element, and then the symbol. The periodic table is arranged into the different columns. You can use these to help you when you're writing formulae as you can link them to valency. We have valency 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. This is a full periodic table with all the transition metals so it's a good one for if you're writing formulae. This periodic table also shows you the dark line here. Everything which is below and to the left of the dark line is a metal and everything which is above and to the right over here is a non-metal. On page 5 we have a version of the periodic table which shows you the melting and boiling points of selected elements. This periodic table does not have the two lines which are at the bottom. Within each box you'll find the atomic number at the top, the name of the element, the melting point in bold and then the boiling point in italics. You'll see that some of the boxes have special symbols. The star means that beryllium only has this boiling point above 28 atmospheres, which is increased pressure. And carbon here sublimes. This means it moves from solid to gas. You can use this page in the data book to help you identify what state an element would be at a certain temperature. If we start off with the solid and we increase the temperature, eventually we will hit the melting point. At this point, we will then have a liquid. If you continue to increase the temperature to the boiling point, you will then get to a gas. If you're given a certain temperature, you need to consider where it lies on this scale. If it is below the melting point, it will be a solid. If it is between the melting point and the boiling point, then it will be a liquid. And if it's above the boiling point, it will be a gas. On page six of the data book, you have a periodic table which does not show the transition metals. This part of the periodic table shows you the electron arrangements. So you have the atomic number, the name of the element, the symbol, and then the electron arrangement. This will allow you to draw target diagrams of individual elements or dot and cross diagrams when you're trying to draw covalent molecules. At the bottom of the page, you also have the flame colours, which is useful for chemical analysis. Each of these metals burns with a characteristic colour of flame. On page 7, you have a list of the elements in alphabetical order. Beside them are their symbols and then you have the relative atomic mass. Relative atomic mass allows you to calculate gram formula mass. At the top of page 8 you have the group ion table. Where you have compounds that end in ATE8, you want to look at page 8. Each of the columns is for a different charge of group ion. This charge relates to the valency of the group ion. Underneath this table you then have the solubility table. To use the solubility table, you find the metal of your compound, say copper 2, and you move across until you find the non-metal, here chloride and read what it says in the table. Here it says Vs, so looking at the key it says Vs means very soluble, S means soluble and I means insoluble. At the top of page 9 you have the melting and boiling points of inorganic compounds. These are compounds which are covalent but not hydrocarbons or ionic and therefore contain a metal and a non-metal. At the bottom of the page you have the melting and boiling points of selected organic compounds. These are ones which are generally hydrocarbons. If we take a look at this table here, we have the alkanes and they are in order from one carbon up to eight. So if you find it difficult to remember how many carbons are within each alkane, you can use this table to help you. On page 10, you have the electrochemical series. This is very similar to the reactivity series with only the top part differing. This page will also help you with redox reactions. 
where you will have all of them written as reduction and if you wish to get oxidation you simply reverse which way around you have your reactants and products. You can also then take two of these equations and combine them to produce a full redox reaction. Pause the video now and use your data book to find the page and value for each of these. For the first question here we're asked for the melting point of silver. You'll find the melting point of silver on page 5 with a value of 962. The density of potassium you will find on page 7 and it has a value of 0 0.89. The boiling point of propanol is an organic compound and you will find it on page 9 with a boiling point of 97. The element with atomic number 100 is on the full periodic table on page 4 and that element is fermium. Electron arrangements are on page 6 and the electron arrangement of magnesium is 282. The discovery date for dysprosium is on page 7 in the alphabetical list and the discovery date for this one is 1886. The specific heat capacity of water is on page 3 underneath the relationships and is 4.18. The state of tellurium you would need to use page 5 and have a look at the value. So we have a value of 1050 degrees Celsius. So you need to consider, is this below the melting point, between the melting point and boiling point, or above the boiling point? This one is above the boiling point, which means that tellurium has boiled and is therefore a gas. The formula for permanganate ion, this ends in ATE, so you'll find it on page eight. And the formula is MnO4 minus. The melting point of silicon dioxide so that's an inorganic compound, is on page 9 and it has a melting point of 1713. The flame colour of strontium is on page 6 and is red and the atomic number of bismuth can be found on either the full periodic table on, peri on page 4 or the shortened one on page 6 and its atomic number is 83. Finally, the solubility of magnesium iodide is on page 8 you read along the magnesium and down the iodide until they meet and you will find that it is very soluble. Let's have a look now at which page you think you should use for these questions. Pause the video now and consider which page you would use for this question here. For this question we have to look at what it's looking for. So it says you may wish to use the data book and we're looking at different numbers of electrons. So if we're looking for electrons then it would be sensible to look at the page with electron arrangements which is page 6. Which page do you think you should use for this question? For this question, it's asking about oxides when they're shaken with water. This would lead us to looking at solubility, which we'll find on page 8. Which page would we use for this question? In this question, we're looking at an electrochemical cell and voltage. This means we need to have a look at the electrochemical series, which we'll find on page 10. Which page you would you use for this question? For this question, we're looking at solutions and we're also looking to find a precipitate, which is a solid. So here we're looking for solubility. So we'll be looking at page eight. Which page do you think you would use for this one? In this question, it specifically asks for the electron arrangement. So looking at page six, where you have the electron arrangements will help guide you towards your answer. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for updates on new videos and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now!